Well, hello, everybody. I'm Chris Kent. Uh, there's all my stuff. We're going to talk about some cool list formatting stuff. In fact, this is a pretty cool uh, trick that I saw in the documentation added by uh, Alberto Suarez. There you go. Um, he came up with this. I thought it was a really cool thing, and I thought I'd show it off here. So let's take a look what we're talking about. So we go to our classic Warrior Horse to say, right? And I'm going to just take a look at our new FAQs list, right? Because even horses have trouble making their content good enough to not need FAQs, right? So they put this together, this very exciting list here. Let's zoom that in. There we go. You know, they've got these FAQs, and this is okay, right? You can click this and, you know, at the info panel, and then you can read, right? Here's your question and answer, and that works, and a lot of people do it this way. Pass, you, you know, you might have changed the format in a little bit using one of the, uh, the kind of inbuilt styles like a bulletin or newsletter style. Uh, but that's not really available here in Monolith. So what can we do? All right, so let's take this trick from Alberto and see if we can apply it. So the first thing is, if we just see what it is, we format this column. Let's scroll that over so we can see it. All right, we just got a little word here. One of the problems we've had, right? A couple of weeks ago, we showed off how to do substring, uh, which is cool, where right? I got the index of, so you kind of find out where things are. One of the things that's really missing, though, is the idea of length. All right, so length of a string. So if we just type in our quick sample here, we'll say home type of div, and I'm going to say text content. In this case, we'll just say right equals. We'll put our at current field, and then we're going to add to that so we can show it a little space, and then we'll add. So we have this idea of a length operator, right? So you would think you could say at current field length, right? And so what we would expect from that is, right, battle has six words, six letters, hugs has four. This one doesn't even have a keyword, right? So we'd expect six, zero, four, right? But we preview that. Instead, length just tells us um, if it has a value or not when it comes to strings. It's really meant for array type objects. So it's meant for multi-select person fields or multi-select choice fields. And that's helpful to tell you how many items there there are. Right, so what do I want? To, what do I do if I need to find out the length of this field, right? Which comes up a lot when you're trying to do some of these substring operations. Well, that's where we can use Alberto's trick, which is pretty awesome. So instead of saying length, which again is the wrong operator in this case, we're going to say index of. All right, so if you recall, index of, uh, you pass in what you want to look inside. So in this case, we're going to look inside at current field. Right, and then you're going to pass in what you want to look for. And what it'll do is it'll return negative one if it's not found, or to return the index, right? So starting at zero, uh, the character for where it finds it. So in this case, we want to look inside a current field, but we're going to trick it by adding a character on the end. In this case, I'm going to add a pipe to the end, and then I'm going to actually look for that pipe. You can make this any character you want. It's obviously a character that should not be in that field normally. And if we run that, we suddenly get the answer, right? Because it's saying the index of this kind of made up string we made on the fly, right? So the end of that is the length. So that's pretty cool. So it's a little hard to read, right? It'd be much easier if it just said length. But either way, um, this is a really neat trick that Alberto's come up with, right? So I'm using pipe because I generally don't type pipe. But again, you can add whatever character you want here, right? Uh, and that'll work. So what do we do with that, right? How do we use that to our advantage? Well, we can do things, um, you know, inside our text. So let's get out of this column format. You'll notice here, got a quest, classic question and answer. Got a couple other fields here, which we'll come back to. All right, if we just wanted to do a simple FAQ list, all right, we might come here and format the current view. And there is a sample, the FAQ format that's available to you, or will be after this call. In advanced mode, and we're just going to paste in our row formatter here. Now, this is pretty much just display logic. We'll take a look at it. All right, if we preview that, all right, we see this, you know, nice format here. We got our question. All right, we got rid of those column headers and the selections. All right, our question's really big, and then here's our answer. And that's neat, right? That's pretty awesome. Now, none of that is using that length trick, right? That's where we're going to come next. So this is cool, but what if we wanted to do something a little more fancy with, like, inside here, right? What if we saw the Project Cortex demos and we thought, that looks awesome, but it's not out, and I want to have a very, very bad version of that. Well, good news! Now you can. So let's take a look at what we might do with that. Again, this is just a couple of divs here in a flex box. You can take a look at that format when you get a chance. 
what if we said we want to say anytime these keywords are mentioned, like battle or hugs inside this answer, we'd actually like it to link somewhere, right? And we'd like to show a little more detail about it. All right, so we want to insert links inside that content. Now, in the past, with list formatting, that was pretty well impossible uh, just because we couldn't do the length and some other things where we could kind of build these substrings, but you can't really kind of break it apart. Now with Alberto's trick, we definitely can. So let me copy the new format, which is just that FAQs, but with some advanced stuff, which we'll take a look at. Let's preview that. Now we start to see something really interesting here, right? So now whenever the word battle comes up, we actually get, you know, now we've got multiple spans here inserted with links just on where those go. So now I can see, you know, a definition here in the tooltip. You know, right here I can click that, you know, and we'll go to search instead. So I shouldn't have clicked that, but here's all the, apparently I've mentioned hugs several times in the Warrior Horses site. So we'll go back here, let's go back to where we were. But the idea here, again, kind of a miniature, very bad ghetto, is that right, ghetto? Uh, version of the Project Cortex. So let's preview that again. We'll save it actually. Now let's take a look. What are we doing? What are these terrible formulas? Right. <laughs> uh, the reason they're so terrible is because we're trying to do it multiple times. So if we just look at the first one, all right, you can see here, uh, here's our children of the answer, right? So we're saying like, hey, if if you don't have the keyword link or the keyword set up, all right, then just show the answer. That's what's happening in the second one. So that's pretty easy. Uh, but obviously, if that's not the case, we create a different div, which is going to hold all of our spans, right? So it's just the opposite check here, and that's what happens here. And so what we do is we come in and we take the first, we do a substring, right? We say what we want a substring of. We want to start at the beginning, which is zero, and we want to go up until wherever the first time we find that keyword, right? Now, notice we're doing this lowercase thing because... Right, you, you can see here we've got a capital H, we have a lowercase h, so we want to make sure we get that. All right, so we're going to grab that first part. That gives us like this during and a space. And then we've got the idea of a link here. All right, now first we have to make sure is the keyword actually there. And if it is, then we just want to pull out that keyword. Now this is where we start to see some of that interesting link stuff come into play here. You can see it right on the end here, which again it says index of, which makes it a little confusing. But what we're doing is we actually are saying after you look through the first part, right? So start after that first part that we just did. Now look for that keyword and grab that and put it out there. Now we want to make sure we take that instead of just putting the keyword in because we want to maintain their formatting, right? When they do capital H's or they do lower, right? Or people are, you know, putting acronyms and sometimes they capitalize the first one or not the other ones. You want to do all that. Now, gets crazy. And again, I'm going to let you guys go through this format later as we go deeper and deeper because we don't really have the idea of variables. We don't have the idea of kind of, uh, you know, one after the other going through it and kind of dividing it up. So each time we have to divide that string up into all the different parts and analyze it from there. But the whole idea is not to go through horrible formulas that are hard to read in this box, but to show you what things might be possible when you add Alberto's length trick. All right, so let's go back to our slides. Very exciting. Thank you, Alberto. So here's the string length trick, just to review. All right, so it's using the index of, and basically you're throwing on a dummy character onto whatever string you're trying to search inside of, and then searching for that dummy character, and that will give you the length of whatever you passed in. All right, so it's not a true length. And if that special character shows up in it, you might get some false positives, right? So best to pick something that's not really in that field if this is something you need to do, uh, right? And then you can use that inside the substring or other index of or some of the other operators like the join operator, other string operators we have to do some really advanced, really cool things. All right, so some resources for you. So the FAQ format, which is actually not on the site, but it will be by the end of the call. Uh, something you could take a look through, um, see what those formulas look like. And uh, that's pretty much it for me. Thanks, guys. Excellent, excellent. excellent. Great, Chris, on that one. Uh, and thank you, Alberta, for the nice uh, trick as well. That's good to get recorded as well. And obviously, 
it might be that we'll come up with the length uh, operator uh, sooner or later. We can expect that to happen, but until that happens, then this is what you can do. And again, by the way, on the GitHub issue and GitHub samples, uh, which is the github.com slash one slash spdev list formatting, it is actually the most used samples what we have in GitHub. So a lot of people are actually using them, uh, using them. So clearly a lot of value in them. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Chris, for coordinating that work as well.